Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to be proving that deterministic context-free languages are not closed under concatenation. And this is actually pretty surprising because most of the, in fact, every other language class that we consider, like regular, context-free, etc., they're all closed under concatenation except this one, which is kind of weird. So the uh, main idea here is that we need to find uh, two languages, L1 and L2, which are DCFLs, such that the link that L1 concatenated with L2 is not a DCFL. That's that's what it means to uh, for it to not be closed under concatenation. There's an example an example of two languages where their concatenation is not a DCFL. And the prototypical language that we know to not be a DCFL is uh, a to the n, b to the n, c to the n, or for any n at least zero, and take the complement of that. And it's not a DCFL because if it were, then its complement would also be a DCFL because DCFLs are closed under complement. But this guy's complement, so remove the complement on this, is not even context-free, and uh, it therefore cannot possibly be a DCFL. Okay, so this guy is not a DCFL. So can we find two DCFLs whose concatenation is this guy right here? And the thing is that it's actually pretty hard to get this directly, but we can get it uh, indirectly. So we are going to pick two DCFLs. And the ones that we're going to pick are going to be L1, which is A to the uh, I, B to the J, C to the J. Uh, actually, no, no, never mind. So it's going to be uh, I, J, and K on all three, where I is not equal to J. And L2, let's make sure this is on screen. So what is L2 going to be? It's going to be uh, the same exponents i, j, and k, but now uh, j is not equal to k. So the first one is uh, the, the a and b, number of a's and b's is different, and the second one is the number of b's and c's is different. Okay, uh, and this is pretty, and these are actually pretty easy to show that these are uh, DCFLs. And I outlined that before. The basic idea is that if the number of a's and b's is different, then either the number of A's is less than the number of B's or bigger. So what you do then is once you are pushing on the A's and then popping uh, them in tandem when you start seeing the B's, then depending on when you see the C here, then you either accept or reject based off of what uh, you see there and what's on the stack at that point. And you can actually do that deterministically, which is pretty nice. Um, so then I'm going to actually make a different language here, which is going to be L3, which is going to be a 0 L1 union L2. And this notation here means a 0 on the front of all strings. And I claim that this guy, uh, let's do a different color, uh, let's do orange. So I claim that L3 is a DCFL. Okay. And the reasoning is the zero helps us distinguish which of L1 and L2 we are in. If it was just L1 union L2, then it turns out that that's not even a DCFL. But because I put this zero on the front, if I see the zero as the first character, then I must be in the L1 case. And if I don't see a zero first, then I must be in the L2 case. And uh, therefore... Uh, we can do this deterministically because I can just uh, split uh, what I'm doing into two parts. If I see a zero, I go this way. If I don't, I go this way and do L2. So I just copy and paste the DPDA for L2 for there and the DPDA for L1 after I see the zero. And so therefore it is a DCFL. Okay, uh, another thing that we should uh, note immediately is that all uh, regular languages are DCFLs. And why is this the case? Well, every DFA is just a DPDA that ignores its stack. And you can actually prove that um, because the transitions of a DFA are mutually exclusive, if we include the stack operations of not 
popping and not pushing, they're, they're disjoint because the thing that's red is disjoint. And for a DFA, there's no transition, uh, no state that has two transitions on the same symbol. And so therefore, there's exactly one transition to do at every point. And so therefore, it's a DCFL. Uh, it's a DPDA, and therefore the language is a DCFL. That's what I meant to say. So uh, what I'm going to claim here is that if I take a zero star, which is regular, so that thing is regular, because, because it's a regex, and I put it in front of L3 like this, this is not a DCFL. And this actually has profound implications. Um, so here's the one thing that I immediately see when I look at this. So if we have a, a DCFL I'm going to call L in a regular language uh, called R, then what you can actually figure out immediately or close to it is if I do the DCFL, then I do the regular language after it, this is a DCFL always. So DCFLs are closed under concatenation with regular languages on the right side. But if we put the regular language on the front, not the right side, then it's not necessarily a DCFL. And here is a counterexample to this, as we're going to see. So they're not even closed under concatenation. They're not even closed under concatenation with regular languages, which is even more surprising. But um, since this language right here is a regular language, it automatically is a DCFL. So therefore, uh, this is a concatenation of two things that are DCFLs that I claim is not a DCFL. So what do we? How do we actually prove this? So the Main idea is to try to get that language, which is the complement of ADN, BDN, CDN. It's, it's eventually going to hit that. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to call uh, this guy right here, I'm going to call the language A. So that's the language that I'm, I'm interested in right now. So A is equal to 0 star L3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take A, which is the language I claim to be a DCFL, and we're going to suppose that A is a DCFL for now. And then we'll get a contradiction later. And don't worry, there's no pumping lemma here. It's purely for using closure properties. There's, there's no true magic happening behind the scenes here. Okay, so what are we going to do with this? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this language A, and I'm going to intersect it with a regular language. And the regular language in this particular case is going to be zero, so a single zero, no star on it, A star, B star, C star. Okay, and one thing that we can immediately see is that this thing must then be a DCFL because DCFLs are closed under intersection with regular languages. That is true. Um, and the reasoning for that is, if you take a DPDA and a DFA, then you can do a product type construction off of them because they're both deterministic. You can do the same thing with a PDA too. And so the DPDA you get out of it, the transitions on them are going to correspond to whatever the DPDA did with the stack. So whatever you're doing in the stack of the resulting DPDA is what the original one would have done. Um, and because the DFA corresponding to the regular language has it doesn't do anything with the stack because it doesn't have one. So we don't have to worry about it. Okay, so what are we going to look at this? So we can notice here that this language right here, so A intersection this uh, regular language right here, which because it's a regex, is in fact equal to zero uh, in front of L1 where the i and j exponents were different, union, oops, union 0 L2. So it's kind of close to L3, except here we put the, the 0 on front of L2 also. OK, um, and then that would immediately say, because of what we just argued up here, that this guy is a DCFL. Right, because, we, because they're equal to each other. So now let's try to show that this thing is not a DCFL. 
Okay, so uh, what we can actually see here is that because there's a zero on front of all the strings, then this would imply that L1 union L2 is a DCFL also. Because the every single string in this whole union language has a zero on the front of it, and nothing. there's no other zeros after that, because each of these languages is only A's, B's, and C's. So the zero is just only occurring once at the beginning. So uh, in the DPDA, the, there's only one transition coming out of the start state, you can assume, that involves reading a zero. So therefore, we can actually cut that transition out and then start the DPDA at the, the next state inside. Um, and so that would imply that this thing is a DCFL. But what we're going to show that this is not actually a DCFL. So uh, if it was a DCFL, then uh, what this would imply uh, is that L1 union L2 by using De Morgan's law. So this is De Morgan's law I'm going to use here is equal to uh, L1 um, uh, uh, bar, so complement, intersection L2 complement, whole thing complement. But uh, if we actually think about what this means, so if we investigate what the languages are, so uh, what the languages are is that uh, here we have the I and J exponents being different, and the B and, uh, yeah, the, sorry, the J and the K exponents being different. And so what we can get here is that this is, in fact, equal to uh, A to the N, B to the N, C to the N, with N at least zero, a whole thing complement. But it's actually subtracting the regular language that corresponds to um, all strings that have uh, that have strings that are in the wrong order, and what what that I, by that I mean that if we look at the union here, all the strings are uh, having A's, B's, and uh, C's in that order, whereas the complement here can have the characters in any order. So what this is actually saying is that uh, if we take away a language B, and then B here is the language of um, so all strings, I'm just going to shorthand this, with uh, B, A, uh, C, B, or C, A in them. So if it has e any one of those three substrings, then uh, it's in the language B. And so therefore, if we take those strings out, then we will get the union over here. So if this thing was uh, a DCFL, then intersecting it with this regular language would also be a DCFL. But this thing is not a DCFL, and so therefore the whole thing is not a DCFL. Cool. So that shows that DCFLs are in fact not closed under concatenation through a pretty roundabout way, but uh, this actually shows that um, uh, DCFLs are in fact not closed under concatenation. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave your thoughts about uh, this proof about DCFLs and the, the fact that they're not closed under pretty much anything. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Uh, leave, uh, there are many other links down in the description if you want to support this channel further. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.